Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you again for joining me and to my weekly devotional uh, show. And in the, of course, we could be on Speaker or YouTube or Facebook Live, wherever you're seeing it on social media. Again, the reason we do this show is because it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me to bring you my thoughts on a Bible teaching with the sole reason of building you up in Christ. Before I begin with my opening monologue, again, I want to say good morning and how are you doing to Donovan, my partner in Christ? Yes, I'm doing great. Uh, the weather is starting to cool down. Your house looks nice. Thank you. Yeah, so I was going to say, it's getting there. It's yeah. really getting piece there. Piece by piece, you know, you take the time, right. it'll come together. I'll tell you, I can't wait until he finishes that house because he's going to come over <laughs> to my house. Oh, yeah. He's right. 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 real talented, right. so I'm telling you that right stuff. So, anyway, you had a good weekend? Had a great week. Awesome. All right, let me get started with my opening monologue. You know, last week we had we had a little bit of fun. We did an introduction on the 1,000-year millennium reign of Jesus right after the seven-year tribulation. So I hope you enjoyed, if you happen to see it or hear it, uh, the history lesson, realizing that a thousand years is a long time and what God has in store for us for that millennium. So I want to go back to the question that I asked last week. What do you think the third millennium has in store for us from God's point of view? Do you think it's going to be the same as what we see today? Do, we, do you think it's going to be the same trends as we're experiencing here in the 21st century? Or do you think it's going to be completely different? Well, last week I concluded the podcast saying that Jesus is going to come back to rule and reign on this earth. What exactly does that mean? In other words, after Jesus comes back, what exactly will he be ruling? What will the world look like at that time? You, this is what, what I'm going to be discussing today and next week, and I know you will enjoy it. You will be overwhelmed with excitement and understanding to what God has planned for us and this world during that millennium time. So let me get started right now. First of all, I want you to, let me read from you from the Bible, from Revelation chapter 20, starting in verse 1. Revelation chapter 20. Now, Revelation 20, chapter 20 is after all the judgments of the seals, the trumpets, and the bulls. Now we're at Revelation chapter 20. In verse 1 it starts like this, And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss, locked it, and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more, until the thousand years has ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So the first thing that we know for sure about the millennium is that Satan will be bound. And every time I think about that, Satan will be bound, it puts a smile on my face. <laughs> Let me ask Donovan a question that I know the answer already. I'm not sure why I'm asking him that. Have you ever seen the movie The Wizard of Oz? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. How many times have you seen that movie? Thousands. I think I've seen that favorite. movie probably hundreds and hundreds of times, and we all enjoy that movie. It's such a great, it's a great flick. But you know, most of you know the story. Dorothy and her little dog Toto skipping down that yellow brick road to going to see the wizard, and then they encounter the Tin Man with no heart, the Lion with no courage, and the Scarecrow with no brain. You know, it's always funny. Every time I do something dumb at my house, my wife usually calls me either the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, or the Lion. One of those things I've been called many, many times. But let me ask you this. When you watch that movie, I'm not, you may not remember this, Donovan, but when you watch that movie the very first time, how many of us cheered from our seats when you saw the Wicked Witch die? Yeah, I remember cheering and being I was going to say, you're just yeah. excited. You may not have cheered, but you're excited because yeah. that finally, that wicked witch did. And then, of course, you go to that song that goes, ding dong, the witch is dead, the right. witch is dead, right. the witch is dead. You know, ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Well, you know, that's the kind of the similar feeling that I think we will have during the time of the millennium. The dragon, much worse than the wicked witch, Satan, is not literally dead because he will be free after a thousand years, but he will be removed by God from this earth for the entire millennium time period. That's right there enough to say, get him out, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. So Satan, this great accuser, the spiritual power that opposes God 
and stands as an enemy to God and his people will be seized by a mighty angel of the Lord and thrown into the abyss. An abyss, what is that? It is, some, it is a, uh, defined as a chasm that is so deep that the end is not visible. In other words, most people call the abyss a bottomless pit. Satan will be bound, the abyss will be locked by chain, and there will be no escape. Wow, can you even imagine that? Wow, that's, that's, that's crazy. The accuser that influences wars and killing, uh, influences evil and chaos, causes pain and suffering, will no longer be an influence on this earth for the a thousand years. Literally, it is so hard to imagine. But why does God do this? Why is Satan bound and then removed? Well, it's clear why he does it, because he states it in Revelation 20, verse 3. Revelation 20, verse 3 says, To keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years have ended. In this world today, sin is, is enticing, especially with our own personal sin natures. The passion and lust by the people on this earth over the things of this world are overwhelming. The Bible says that Satan and his evil spirits are the ones that arouse this passion and lust within us. How do we know that? Let me read to you from Ephesians 6 verse 12, the New Living Translation. Ephesians 6 12 from the New Living Translation says this, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Folks, it is Satan that pushes our sinful natures to lust after worldly things over God. It is Satan that pushes our sinful natures to lust after power and fame over surrendering each day to the Lord. And it is Satan that pushes our sinful natures to lust after sin instead of living in the holiness of God. And if it is our sinful natures that take over when temptations act in, within ourselves that causes us to sin. But now we learn in the millennium we will not have this devil influence in this world. Man will live in a society on earth never seen in the history of the world, not even in the Garden of Eden. No more Satan, no more of his evil angels, no more demons, no more sinful influences against God. That's what the millennium is going to be like. Can you even imagine that? Nope. I can't. I can't even, but I'm looking forward to it. The second thing, <coughs> excuse me, the second thing we know about the millennium is this. Jesus will reign as king. Let me summarize all this for you to this point. Back in Genesis chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth, as we all know. And it was absolutely perfect, and it was a beautiful environment. It was called the Garden of Eden. <coughs> excuse me. And God provided everything for man. There was no disease. No evil, no smog, and no pain. All Adam had to do was be obedient to God's commands. Then in Genesis 3, the serpent, also known as the devil, deceived Adam and Eve, and sin entered into the world. In other words, at this point, God's perfect creation, perfect environment, was now flawed when sin entered into this earth. It was no longer perfect. And since God is perfect, he cannot face sin. So then Satan became ruler of this earth and God of this world. And Satan has been in control since Genesis 3 all the way up till today. That's why we have so much evil in this world. But something happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus came down from heaven onto earth in human flesh and died a horrible death on the cross. Now that part of it is not the awesome part. What is awesome is that in three days, Jesus miraculously resurrected from the dead and completely restored the relationship of God with mankind for those who surrendered their lives to the Lord for the forgiveness of sins. This one amazing act of love by Jesus 
justified God's anger against man's sin and redeemed our relationship with the Lord. In other words, Jesus won planet Earth that was lost by Adam and Eve at the cross. He won it at the cross what Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden. Satan, the ruler of this age, and his demon angels did not realize any of this until it was too late. Think about it from Satan's point of view. When he saw Christ on that cross, he thought he won. Right, right. He thought everything was over. over. Right. God was dead, and now he can rule and reign, not realizing the plan that God had for mankind. How do we know this? 1 Corinthians 2.8. Amazing verse if you've never read it. 1 Corinthians 2.8 says this. Listen to this, Donovan. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had... They would have not crucified the Lord yes. for glory. If Satan would have known, he would have done everything to stop the crucifixion. But now that he didn't, the Lord reigns again <coughs> on this earth. Excuse me. But instead of Jesus claiming his rightful ownership of planet earth back then, he ascended back to heaven after 40 days after his resurrection and is seated today at the right hand of the Father for the past 2,000 years. You might be thinking to yourself, well, why did Jesus do that? Why would God wait so long to claim now what is rightfully his? Jesus won. He won at the cross. Why is God waiting so many years to claim what he's already accomplished? And you know what the easy answer to that is, Darwin? God loves you and me mm. that much. Think about it. God wanted as many people as possible to repent and surrender to him in order to be able to live with God for eternity. Think about if God didn't do this. If God did, did, do not, did not do this, then you and I may never have been saved. That's what 2 Peter 3, 9 is all about. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I've always asked this question, why this world is so horrible? Why are we not raptured yet? Mm -hmm. Because there may be one more person right. that wants to come to repentance, and God will wait for that one last person. And I'm going to tell you this, folks. I am so grateful that God has waited this long, or as I aforementioned, Donovan and I may not have been saved for eternity. Mm. Folks, God is patient waiting for all who desire to surrender to him to be to be found and saved and able to be in heaven with the Lord. Lord. And that includes your unsaved family members and my unsaved friends and family members as well. Now next week we're going to take a look at how life will be like during the millennium for not only the world, but for you and us. Because a lot of people have asked me that question, Don, what am I going to be doing in the millennium for a thousand years? I mean, am I going to be working at a factory? Am I going to be uh, tilling the ground? What is God's plan for us, His church, during the millennium? Well, guess what? We're going to talk a little bit about that next week, so you definitely do not want to miss that podcast. And trust me, it is going to be different than what you might expect because of what you experience here in this world today. So, you don't want to miss next week, so let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you so much for your word. It is hard for us to imagine how life will be like in the millennium period. It is hard for us to imagine what life will be like with Satan bound with his demons. And it's also very hard for us to imagine how it would be like with you ruling down here in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we know that it's all true because your word is true. So we trust you in all things. Lord, we don't need to understand it all. We need to completely trust you and live each day for you. So, Lord, we thank you for all the countless blessings that you have provided for us. We honor and praise you and give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed my opening monologue today on the first half of the millennium from the book of Revelation, especially from God's point of view. As I mentioned, next week we will continue a more detailed look at this thousand-year millennium reign of Jesus on this earth, and from a born-again Christian point of view, it is truly amazing. We will be in our glorified bodies with no more tears and no more pain. You can't even imagine that in right. today's world. Right. And we will be with Jesus 
serving Him. Again, I want to thank all of you for uh, checking out, following, and then of course sharing my Reflections Ministry Facebook page. It's literally exploding. I was uh, telling Donovan before the, before we started this podcast that we've went over the 100,000 reach mark for the first time ever for one week. Over 100,000. Never had that happen. We started with about 10. I think they were all Donovan's relatives. I think that's all we ever had. Yeah. My relatives wouldn't even watch the show right. or they wouldn't listen. So the fact that it's gone this, uh, this size is just a blessing from God. And He gets all oh, oh, the glory good. for everything that's happened. But it's also you too. Because without you sharing it, without you inviting friends and to follow the page, it never happens. So please, continue to share the devotionals, the podcast, in, uh, each and every day. And also, if you've never heard of it, it's called Reflections Ministry Facebook page. All we do on that page is devotionals, Christ-like memes, and of course this podcast and video podcast. You will love it because it is completely Christ-centered. Check it out, like it, follow it, and then of course share it. We, I want to thank you so much for listening to my opening monologue, and may God bless you. All right. Hey, uh, you know, there's a lot of good news that's happening this week. The Lord, it, uh, for those that, you know, have doubt about if there's this uh, God and all this, you know, you know, I know Satan is just, he's just working you, working you to death. I'm telling you, uh, I'm a believer. I see it every day. I've seen it, what he's done with Pastor Don and, and, yeah. and growing the thing, because this is a very humble man. And, uh, he came to me and was like, hey, I want to do this thing, and I don't know how to do it, you know, I'm going to do that. And then I said, okay, well, you know, we'll do it. And we started at a little Starbucks coffee shop. You talk, start, you, you talk about starting with a mustard seed <laughs> yeah. and growing it into a, a, a large plant. This is what this started with a mustard seed with Donovan and I sitting at a Starbucks, basically doing a show to about 12, 10 people. Ten people. And mm-hmm. you know what? We thought, you know what? God's going to take this and either let it grow or it's, gonna, or it's just going to die. One of the two. And of course, God plan was to let it grow. And yeah, it's it, it's amazing what God has done with what we started here. I mean, I, I was telling you, I think over just, just the podcast itself had almost over 12,000 just on Reflections Ministry page. So, you know, this is all this is all God. God's the one that's driving this, but it's also, like I said, it's all the audience who, who's willing to share and, and like and share the, 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 the podcast. You know, so, uh, and I bring that up for some of the fact that, you know, a lot of people, it's hard to remain faithful when you're just so barraged with what's going on in your daily life, but uh, God will water, but you've got to be faithful. You do. You, I mean, that's the key. Yeah, you really do. You know, the, the, the thing is, and, and you got to be consistent. consistent. You know, it, it's so, you know, a lot of people like to do things to get it started, get excited, but then after three, six, nine months, you know, mm-hmm. the, the excitement goes away and they stop. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when you need to rely on God. That's when you need to trust Him. You don't stop because God's got a plan. He's got a plan for this show. This show's not about me. This show's not about Donovan. This show's about giving glory to Him. And that's what He's done with this show is wide, vast markets that we have now because it's glorifying Him. And that's what the whole goal of this show's been from day one. Right. And, uh, cause, and, don't, and you know, uh, Satan uh, comes at us on the day of the I mean, you know, I go on vacation. Sometimes we take a hiatus. But at the same time, being faithful, sometimes we'll, we'll miss a day because Pastor I might have to go to the doctor. Or he sure. might have to go uh, to a church or something. But we'll double up a show. Exactly. Stay faithful. Yeah, we don't know. stop. We don't stop. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, I think I was telling Donovan, we are literally, this is our 95th show. Wow. 95 shows. I mean, 52 weeks in a year. You know, we've almost been doing this for two years. Yeah. And we really, except for maybe one vacation or two vacation yeah. weeks, we haven't missed a week. And, yeah. and I'll tell you. I literally look forward to Tuesday morning. Morning, morning. Not only to see my friend here, because yeah. it's always a joy to see Don, yeah. but just to do the show. Because I enjoy it so much. It's like it's like talking to friends. Yeah. And it's really enjoyable. I, I just absolutely love it. And I love it even no, uh, more now, because as we talk about Millennium, I have so many people, Don, that ask me, you know, I know I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus, but what what is that all about? Mm-hmm. And you know, the Bible never gives us a lot of information about heaven, about millennium, mm-hmm. about the thousand year reign, the new Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. We don't know because God doesn't tell us. And I always thought, Lord, why didn't you? T- if you told us more about what eternity is going to be like, more people would would um, surrender right. to you because right. they would want that. Want that right. But think of it from God's point of view. God, you, God wants us to surrender, not because of of, 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 the, of the mansion. And, uh, right. Exactly, <laughs> not because of the riches, the mansions, uh-huh. and all that. He wants to surrender because of our love for Jesus. Right. 
It's got to be Jesus. Hey, when we get to heaven, we're going to be surprised because there's no way our minds could ever imagine the beauty and, and the joy we're going to have in heaven. But for the reason we surrender, it, and the reason why we want to be in heaven is to, is to be with Jesus. Um, I was talking to a pastor last week, or the week before last, I'm sorry. And he was, of course, he follows the show. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of pastors yeah. do. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, 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 the competition spirit. Sure. And um, he had made a, a comment that... Um, and you know, and I'm kind of speculating myself. Maybe another reason why why we're getting a big pop, or at least you're getting a big pop in your show, is because you're talking about the last days. Exactly. And people are. And a lot of people don't. A lot of pastors don't talk about that, mm-hmm. and so a lot of people have piqued a lot of their interest. Do you, do you think that that might be a? I do, and I think one of the reasons why of that is because there's not a lot of pastors that actually preach on end times, mm-hmm. and definitely don't preach on the millennium because there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of division when it comes it's to these scary. topics. It's scary. People they don't want to talk about something that's not going to lift up their congregation up because they might leave mm-hmm. <laughs> and they don't want to lose that money, all that stuff. So when you have a show that's focused. I mean, we've done this for 29 shows, 29 shows, 10 times, and then going into the millennium, you know, because they don't hear it anywhere else. So this gives them a place that they can listen, they can hopefully understand, and then they can check it out for themselves. I mean, you don't take my word for it, don't take Donovan's word for it. Go back to the Bible and research it yourself, and then ask me questions. I get a lot of questions from people, and I love that, because that tells me that you're listening, number one, but it also tells me that you're questioning and wanting to understand even more. So that's a blessing. So yeah, I think a lot of that is the topic, the topic of end times. I also think that maybe this is the timing that God has to make this show um, um, grow, because he wants us to understand this. Because he needs us to understand what, how, how, how important it is to repent today and not keep waiting because tomorrow night may not come. Right. I have a, a question came to me um, on Saturday. Somebody had emailed me and they said, <clears throat> there's a rumor or something, and I don't, I don't know if, if, if you know the answer to this. And I kind of looked it up on YouTube. <laughs> don't Google everything. All answers on Google. But I looked it up and I, and I saw some uh, videos and I saw some uh, information where they were saying that uh, there's a theory that Jesus and Satan are brothers. Oh. Ha- have you heard that? Oh, that's, yeah, that's the one of the religions mm-hmm. believes that Satan. Is I, I think I think Mormons. Yeah, the Mormon Mormons. religion that believes that they basically are both from God mm-hmm. and that they were uh, and they're and that they're um, brothers. Of course, that's completely false. false right. And I can, and, and I'm I'm not going to get into it that much, yeah. but I do want the audience to do two things for me. I want you to open your Bibles when you can to Isaiah chapter 14. And then after you read Isaiah chapter 14, get over to Ezekiel and read Ezekiel chapter 28. And what Isaiah 14 Ezekiel 28 will tell you is exactly the origin of Satan. Satan right. He is not a god. He is never going to be a god. He is not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He's not om- omnipotent. Mm-hmm. He is nothing like God. He is an angel of God. Now, he was a powerful angel, powerful, probably one of the most powerful, beautiful angels God ever created. Mm-hmm. But the key is that he was created mm-hmm. by God, where God had no beginning and no end. So, yeah, a lot of people get confused about that. I usually point them to Isaiah 14 or Ezekiel okay. 28 to understand it a little bit better. If you go to the, uh, the book of Job, chapter 1, the only re- re- reason why Satan was able to uh, tempt Job and do what he did mm-hmm. with Job is he had to get God's permission. Right, had to get God's permission. Right. He can't do anything without God's permission. That's why he's called the great accuser. He can only accuse. He can't do anything more than that because God is in control. So yeah, when they say, oh, well, God and Jesus are brothers. No, not even close. God, Jesus is God, the Son of God. He's the part of the Trinity, second person in the Trinity. And Satan is just a fallen angel. Fallen angel, right. So, uh, you know, I'm glad you cleared that up. But um, again, thank you guys for the questions. Great questions. Yes. uh, Email, you know, just come on in and message us, text us. And even when we're live on the show, you could uh, message us and we can get those messages going. Absolutely. And those questions are are great questions because it may put a sliver of doubt on who Jesus is in your mind. And now that you do your own research and now you realize that, no, that's not true, then that could get get your faith stronger. And of course, more, you know, surrender it more to the Lord. Sure. Um, but a lot of things going on in the week, uh, Pastor. Yeah, there, there really is. You know, this it's been a it's been a crazy time. <laughs> we're, we're doing the show a little bit earlier today, and the reason for that is that um, Reflections Christian Fellowship, which, which is my a small church out in the city of Paris, we are we are teaming up with uh, the American Legion and the VFWs, which is the Veteran of Foreign Wars. 
uh, in the city of Paris because what we're going to do is we're going to have a day of celebration. We are going to celebrate God first. God first, but then we're also going to celebrate our veterans. And what we're having, I've got this, I uh, gave one to Donovan, he's going to post it. It's a little bit of a flyer. It's a save the date flyer for November the 3rd, which is a, a, a little over a week prior to Veterans Day in the city of Paris that we are going to have a Paris parade, uh, a par parade for veterans uh, for, in the city. And then after the parade, we're going to have this big celebration. I'm talking about bands. I'm talking about comedians. We've got an awesome guest speaker, mm -hmm. hopefully Alti, Alti okay. Holcomb, right. great man, love the mm -hmm. Lord, veteran. We've got um, we've got an MC. We've got DJs. We're going to have a classic car show, awesome cars. We've got a classic motorcycle show and competition raffles. We're talking about a full day of honoring God and of course honoring our veterans on that day. So. I want to bring it up to your attention. I know it's further it's further out. It's not till November the 3rd, but I just want you to keep it in the back of your mind to be in the city of Paris on that day. The parade starts at 10, the activities start at 12, and it's going to go day and night, and it's going okay. to be a lot of fun. And I'll tell you, great family time, lots of food. The kids will have a great time. You don't want to miss it. So here's the flyer. We'll post it on Inland Empire Informer, and we'll also oh, yeah, post yeah. it on the Pastor Don. Um, the Pastor on Reflections Ministries, but I'll tell you, something you want to make sure that you're there and you want to invite your friends, family, friends, neighbors, come on out and just have a great, great time. time. Yeah. If, you have, if you've never been to the city of Paris, uh, been out here for a long time, a lot of ballooning or uh, par uh, parachutists go out there. Oh yeah, because Skyline, yeah, Skyline USA right, is right up right, in the city of right Paris. Right out there and uh, a great city, a lot of uh, things going on that they're building out there. Yeah, and matter of fact, you know, Paris is doing a great job in honoring God and veterans. We just had the night of prayer yeah. last week, about a, little, a couple of weeks back, which was awesome. We had a number of people out there praying for the state, the city, our, um, our, our uh, the law enforcement, our families. Mm -hmm. It was great. And now we're going to be honoring veterans as well. So yeah, they're doing a lot of things in order mm -hmm. to be able to get out to the communities and let's have a lot of fun. But let's let's get the honor where it goes. God always first, and then the veterans. veterans. We need to do more for veterans. I am a fur. I never served. No. I know this man served for many many years. Yeah. I never served, but I'll tell you this: I love the veterans. Right, I right. really do, and I will honor them in his way, any way we can. Absolutely. And uh, again, the city of Paris, which borders um, March Air Reserve Base, which is formerly March Air Force Base big supporter of uh, the Air Force and the military, so it's a big component of what that base does over there. So. Now you might be thinking, well wait a minute, I don't live in the Inland Empire, I don't live in Riverside County or Paris or Marina Valley, I just, what, do you want, what can I do? Well, what you can do is you can post it on your particular sure. page, because I know that you know people that live in this Inland Empire area, to just get the word out. You know, if you know, you know family members, friends, or anybody that lives anywhere within a 15, 20 mile radius of Marino Valley and Paris, let them know about that. Let them share with their friends that live in this. Everybody knows somebody. somebody. And I'm telling you, if the more that we share it, the more we get it out, the more opportunities they'll have to be able to come, enjoy, and then, like I said, honor God and Absolutely. Well, you know, um, and just, just a, a, a quick tip. It's a classic car show and a classic motorcycle show. Now, there's always that person in the neighborhood that has that car in their driveway that kind of just sits up there and they're working on it, they're working on it. This is a chance to kind of go to that neighbor and say, hey, November 3rd is a classic car show. You might want to get your car. I'm going to yeah. tell you, we're going to have probably over 100 cars there. Yeah. We're going to probably have hopefully about 100 motorcycles there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if you've never been to a classic car show yeah. or a classic motorcycle event, you might think, well, I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're into yeah. it. These cars are amazing. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I'm not a huge car guy. Mm -hmm. I like cars because it gets me where I gotta go. Mm -hmm. But I've never been. But I actually had a classic car. I don't know if you know this. I actually had a classic what? car. I had a 1965 Mustang. Oh, Mustang. That was, a, that was my okay. classic car. Yeah, I only had 60,000 miles on it. So I did have a classic car. Oh, wow. But I'll tell you, you go to these places, you will totally enjoy yeah. just just seeing the different varieties mm -hmm. of low rider cars to the Mustang clubs mm -hmm. to these other types of vehicles. These old. 1930s and 40s vehicles that are completely restored. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. So again, something you don't want to miss. If you yeah. Seen um, it. And again, for the uh, I'm not a car guy. Too, but my brother is. He's in the classic cars. You got to remember, uh, there's a, a thing, especially with veterans. It's that outlaw biker type, you know, rebellion mm -hmm. type 
environment. We're not saying it's a, you know, a bad environment, but it's an environment where, you know, these people are like really expressing themselves and they express themselves through their vehicles. Yeah. And a lot of these car uh, clubs and stuff, they love doing that. Like if you retire like myself, you have nothing to do, you join these car clubs, motorcycle clubs, and these people really are into the community. Mm -hmm. and, and they go out and you know, a lot of them are Christian based. Oh yeah. Uh, it's it's funny, what, during the Memorial Day weekend time period, you know, all these different motorcycle clubs get together over at the, um, at the, uh, um, on, in Riverside, mm -hmm. you know, I've got, um, I can't remember, um, is it, yeah, the Riverside right. place out there on in Madison and, and, um, and Indiana, I can't yeah, remember, yeah, Skip, Skip Fordyce, yeah. his place out there, mm -hmm. and what they do is they ride from there all the way to the uh, cemetery, mm -hmm. and then Parrish does the exact same thing, mm -hmm. we're talking literally thousands, thousands. and thousands, mm -hmm. and we're talking all veterans, mm -hmm. you know, all war, either either in war veterans yeah. or just military veterans, yeah. and we're talking veterans literally thousands, mm -hmm. because these people are loyal, to, you know, to what they've done, and, a, and like Donovan said, a lot of them are Christians, yeah. and they love the Lord first. That's why we did the event, because Paris, we all, they do a, they do a parade every year, mm -hmm. but it hasn't gotten the um, exposure mm -hmm. that it needs to get. Mm -hmm. We need to get more people, and we did it a week before mm -hmm. Veterans Day, because it's going to be more events on the 10th, so we decided to do it on the 3rd, so you get more uh, access to more people to be able to right, come out. Right, you know, we're out in the Inland Empire, there's, you know, I hate to say this, there's, there's not as much to do in the Inland Empire as there is in San Diego or L.A. Sure. So here, but we do have things that we do, and this is one of them. No, this is a great and, thing. And um, I'm, I'm going to pray and hope that you guys do not run out of food like the last <laughs> event that you guys did or okay, you know, okay yeah yeah you know. wait a minute you weren't even there so I yeah, got, I got that, that, but, but you know I mean, but you're right yeah, we did run out of food I mean you know and yeah. that's how popular these things get yeah, because really people do. really come out but you, but you know the thing that makes me smile a lot is you know the, 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 there's a lot of positives going on but Air Force Base is always a positive the, the air shows that they, that they have two three times a year the Blue Angels that's awesome mm -hmm. now we're getting a golf course a beautiful 18-hole golf course that's just it's, it's going to be the talk of the city the talk of the county mm -hmm. per se that's going to be uh, hopefully completed by the end of the year in which again God will be the centerpiece by mm -hmm. having a church within the clubhouse of that um, site right there and then we have the night of prayer in Paris and we're doing this uh, honoring God and veterans so it's you're starting America. to see a trend yeah. here in the uh, Inland Empire in the eastern end of the Inland Empire we're starting to see a lot more things going on that are so positive right. and God being glorified through all these things so I'm excited I'm excited about the uh, this um, this event the veterans event the uh, clubhouse restaurant and church going on in Moreno Valley and I've always been excited about the um, the base and the, and the activities they do there so absolutely. it's really really wonderful absolutely with all the negative things that we yeah. always hear about that seems like all we care the news is just too much there's a lot of good things yeah, happening, happening as well, as well so. and I'm telling you again if you're not in this area then just pray for the event you know pray that God gets glorified in everything we do and then pray that people join us absolutely absolutely um, also uh, I just want to uh, again congratulate you on 100,000 yeah that's remember. that's that's a blessing um, from the Lord what, a, and, what an awesome thing and you know yeah and you know I'm on the blogs a lot and I kind of you know troll a lot of things and I'm gonna tell you uh, and I know a lot of pastors are living yourself and you know, again, they always ask me, they go, "Why do you do that show with that guy? Mm -hmm. I need you to come over and do my show and help me." Yeah, I bet. You know? and, and and the thing is, like, I said, you know, what's so funny. They ask me, "Why do I do the show with this guy?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little controversial. Well, because Dauphin is known for you know his yeah. his political stances, and yeah. and he's and he's and his Inland Empire Informers is a great site, mm -hmm. but that's a political part of, of of what he enjoys doing, and and he and he's very well known in this area mm -hmm. for what he does. But sometimes that gets a little heated, you know, yeah. politics always yeah. gets heated. So I've had a number of people say, well, you know, and if they don't agree with his stances on certain things, they'll say, well, why would you do a Bible-based show with that person type thing? And that answer is very easy. He's a brother in Christ. I don't, you know, what he does on his other shows, that's, that's, what, that's his show this. But every time I'm with him, this man is faithful. This man loves the Lord. We pray together. There is no doubt in my mind that this man sacrifices for God to do what he does for this show. I, what, everything else matters nothing to me. That's all that matters to me is the heart 
of Donovan to help right. spread the, the name of Jesus. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Pastor Don, are, are, don't Christians come in all sizes, colors, and shapes? Hey, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And God uses all types. Right. Uh, we always laugh about this, but it, you know, a year and a half ago, if they would say that an old white guy right. with a, a younger black man, you know, an activist type black man, would get together and do a show like this, that's like the two stooges. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> Never would happen. happen. But you know what? God had a plan. And now this plan is just absolutely erupting, and you know what? What a blessing it is! It, it really is. is. And I am, I am absolutely honored to yeah. know this man. Not only as a veteran and in his service he's done, but his love for the Lord. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, in in the business of pastoring, you guys are all trying to shepherd the same sheep mm-hmm. in the same areas and stuff like that. Um, you know, and the question always comes to be like, well, I want you to come to do this show now. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of work to do the editing in these shows. No question. <laughs> this is not hour, something yeah. you can take five minutes right, and it's done. done yeah. We're talking a many yeah, it, it hours. Takes a couple hours. It takes a couple hours. And, you know, a lot of people want to, like, steer me away over here. And, oh, you mm-hmm. need to come over here. And, you know, and then, you know, I, it, it's no secret because we all want the word of God to go out. Absolutely. So even though I, I can't necessarily help them in that aspect, I tell them, well, just go get this and go do that and you can do it. And the, the, the golden answer is consistency. You, you yeah. can't start and stop. Yeah. I can't say that enough. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this because you know what? You know, the, you got a lot of people that ask me the question, "Why do you even start these licensed ministry?" And I think I mentioned this a few times back, but I want to mention it again because it's important. I started Reflections Ministries because I was so annoyed with my own church. Mm-hmm. Is that I saw all these people come to church on Sundays, and yeah, they were putting on their Sunday mm-hmm. best, mm-hmm. and they were acting their Sunday best. Mm-hmm. And then from Monday through Saturday, the, the name Jesus never came up in their houses. I, it annoyed me to know much. I said, wait a minute, Sunday is not just God's day. Every day is God's day. So I say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a daily devotional. At least they're going to get a little piece of Jesus each and every day. And that's what got me started on it. Because I was so annoyed that people only talked about Jesus on Sundays. And after that, okay, I did the God thing. Now I can do my thing from Monday to Saturday. Seriously? No, Monday to Saturday is when you need God the most, I think, because you're in the world more. So that's when I started the daily devotionals. I started that about oh, oh almost eight, seventeen months ago, mm-hmm. and uh, just it was just a small little page that my son and I put together. Had probably five followers. It was all my family, <laughs> yeah. and uh, said, you know, we're going to just keep get it out and keep it keep going. It. And that's and now we have done it seven days a week for almost mm-hmm. fifteen months. And this is what happens when you're consistent, like you're right. saying, when you are consistent and. And the message is to the point that people can actually relate to, right, right. and they can really be built up. Yeah, that's what God wants. Right, right. But, and you know, and we're saying this because consistency is also how you conduct yourself in your life. And exactly. You have to be consistent. You exactly. Can't, you can't consistent prayer. Yes. Consistent Bible study. Consistent um, uh, uh, surrender each day to the Lord. Hiding. Consistent. Exactly. Hiding. If, if, if we can do it more consistently, our lives change so much for the better. So it is important that we allow ourselves, you know, to be consistent in our walk each and every day. So. And, and, and Pastor Don, I'm a witness. I'm, I'm telling you, when, uh, you know, when I was in the world a lot more, it was, I always had not, I didn't have money problems, but it's like you're always spending, you know, or, money. Just, or you're worrying about Yeah, something. worrying about money, money, money. And the minute I just said, you know what, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to worry about money. Mm-hmm. I get a uh, retired, you know, I get my little pension check Absolutely. and I'll live within that. And, you know, when I was working, I made way more money. So sure. you retire from the middle you get half of your money or whatever. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm living better on the half than when I had the whole. Yeah. And that's because I just gave it up to God and I said, you know what? God's going to provide something. Yeah, see, I've got the same story. You know, when I was in the business world, I made millions. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean, as a pastor, I make nothing, <laughs> and, I'm, and I am a thousand times happier today than I was when I was in the business world because I don't have any worries either. You know, I don't care now about the big fancy car. I don't care about the stuff that I cared about three prior. All I care now about is just doing the work of God and God provides, mm-hmm. yeah. and He does. He provides. He always provides. You. It's just so crazy, especially in my little church in Paris. Mm-hmm. I mean, Paris is probably a, you know, it's not the most um, you know high rent area. Mm-hmm. You, know, there's, you know, there's a lot of yeah. people in Paris that are struggling mm-hmm. a lot. So our church is struggling at mm-hmm. times financially. Mm-hmm. And I cannot tell you in 10 different occasions 
how God has come through mm-hmm. when we didn't know where, where we were going to get finances to pay the bills that we had. Right. And it always it happens every single month. It's like, wow, it's a God thing. Yeah. And I you know, never had to worry about it because we knew that God would provide. Yeah. And He does. And it can provide for you as long as you take the worries away from yourself and the world. Put it on, put it on God. Put it on Let God. Him do it. Mm-hmm. And He will because He's faithful. Right? He is um, faithful. And, you know, um, you know I, and, uh, I'm going to tell you for this man, I know he has a nice church, a nice size church and everything like that. But the joy that he gets when he, because he's a numbers guy, he sees those numbers of that message. And a lot of pastors are like that. It's about the message and getting that word of God out. Mm-hmm. And when you're getting your word out, what, six, seven times more than your congregation in church. I mean, people yeah. love it. And, and that's a... Uh, exactly. Because a lot of people say, oh, oh, the reason why you like numbers is because you're probably getting advertising money. Or you're probably getting something um, from that site to get. That's why you want the numbers so much. You could do that. And, and, and we could, but we don't. It's yeah, funny, I think people know. approach me that mm-hmm. want to advertise and get, yeah. they'll give me 10, 5 cents at the clip. Yeah. What, what, yeah. No, uh, we don't, we're not that has that. nothing to do with that. I don't have any interest in that. I have only an interest in spreading the word of God. You know, and that's, and that's it. Now, the, now, the only way that I would think about that is if the money went to a cause. Right. Something that's going to help children or help areas mm-hmm. that are really in need. As long as it doesn't come to me, then, I'm, then, then I might be okay with that. But, you know, these other pastors, yeah, they want to maybe raise more money or put a donate thing, right. a button on there yeah. so you get more. No, no, no because it, 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 it takes you away from what the real purpose is in spreading Jesus and the light of Jesus to people. And it just kind of waters it down. Yeah. Because now, where's your motive? Is it really in Christ or is it more money type right. thing? So, yeah, I, all, all I can say is I, I can't tell you how blessed I am for this show. I'm blessed to know this man. I'm blessed with what he does to produce and edit this show. But I'm also blessed for you, the audience. Right. <laughs> we're just we're doing this to our family if it wasn't for you. So I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for sharing, you know, following and enjoying what what we're doing here. Because like I said, without you, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, last question and uh, last parallel. Um, as many times as we both get thrown in the Facebook tail, sometimes I feel like I feel like uh, down the Baptist. Or, All the time. You know, you know, like you're getting persecuted because we're we're putting this positive word out and they just keep. Hitting us, hitting us, hitting us, but we don't stop. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I can tell you this one quick story. And I knew I was going to put Facebook jail, but at this point, I did a story on, I did a, I did a, a, a devotional on the devil. Mm-hmm. And I basically wrote in there, basically based on, like, on Peter, says resist the devil. So I did a picture saying resist the devil. It was a picture of resisting the devil. Well, Facebook thought I was part of the resistance. And put me in Facebook jail. Right. And I and I wrote back. They said, "Well, send, if you don't agree with this, send a comment." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I wrote a biblical verse to Christian groups about resisting <laughs> the devil, which is in the Bible. That has nothing to do with the resistance right. in the world, I think. Mm-hmm. And yet, for at least seven days, You're they put jail. me in Facebook jail. So, yeah, the world will always <laughs> try." to limit what you're doing or stop if they can what you're doing and you know what that's fine so I found other places that share it versus yeah. mine because we're not going to stop no. we're not going to stop not because we're so egotistical and we think we want the numbers but because this is what God wants us to do he yeah. wants us to spread the word we're not stopping or or, or does God uh, like testing our faithfulness and saying are you going to continue to do this or are you going to you know cap out or are you just going to quit because it's so frustrating right. yeah, he, yeah God said look at this okay what's going what are you guys going to do and what we're going to do is we're going to wait the seven days to figure out different right. things, and then we're going to continue to go forward. There That's what we're going to do. So again, I just want to thank you, the audience, so much for everything you do for this show. Please continue. I've got a big meeting this Thursday. I was going to tell Donovan this. A meeting with uh, Eric, uh, who's the basically the bridge um, um, representative from Bridge, who bought the um, clubhouse, the golf course, and the restaurant out there in uh, eastern Reno Valley. But I'm also going to be meeting with Mark Stevens, which is actually the the man who's responsible for building the golf course, built the architect, he's actually going to be the owner because you know right now Bridge is basically the bank, right. and and Diamond, which Mark runs, he's basically the one that's actually building all these things out there in that uh, area. Well, I'm going to hopefully be meeting with them this week to talk about the church, talk about details of the church, talk about um, contractual issues with mm-hmm. the church. So I just ask you guys to pray that that meeting goes positive, that we agree on the things that are important so that we can go forward and start, uh, you know, getting flyers out there and start, you know, telling the people about mm-hmm. the church and when it's going to start. So mm-hmm. this meeting is extremely important. It's on Thursday, probably Thursday afternoon. And I also want to tell Donovan one more thing he may not know. There's a community meeting at the clubhouse 
this coming Thursday at 6 o'clock. So if you live in the Moreno Valley area, especially in the Rancho Bellagio area, please come out to the community meeting in the clubhouse of the golf course, 6 p.m. this coming Thursday for about an hour. It'll be about an hour time. Okay. No problem at all. Anything else you got, my friend? Other than you guys stay uh, under the under wraps with the heat. We'll see you guys again next week. God bless you guys. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. And may the Lord richly bless you and your family. See you next week. Three plus two.